Setting up the environment with AWS. Lecture 3. There are some prerequisites for this lecture, which include an AWS account or sub account in good standing, identity access management to create new IAM users, groups, and roles, unrestricted EC2 access to create EC2 instances, launch configurations, load balancers, and auto scaling groups, access to create a new DynamoDB table and global table if preferred, and configuration ability, access to create new S3 buckets. Access to create a new record set in a Route 53 forward zone. CloudFormation stack create abilities. A VPC with a public and private zone. See CloudFormation VPC in 2AZ and additional resources for that CloudFormation template. Use the CloudFormation VPC in 2AZ external resource to deploy using AWS CloudFormation. You'll want to set the class B value to whichever you prefer. In our, in our example, it's set to 10. You will see the VPC stack deploy with two availability zones. And take note of that VPC ID, it'll be used throughout. Now we'll wait while the VPC CloudFormation stack is deployed. Feel free to skip past this part if you've already created your VPC for this project. First step is in Route 53. You'll want to create your Route 53 for DS DNS zone if not already completed. Set your DNS and domain providers name servers to AWS name servers. That'll be provided once you've created the Route 53 forward zone. We'll want to wait up to 24 hours to, for it to propagate. Once globally resolving, follow the next steps. Next, we'll create the S3 bucket where the configuration and the vault unlock and unseal keys will be stored. Browse to S3, create the bucket, name it HC vault config, and append a unique identifier to the end. All AWS S3 buckets must have a unique name. Follow the steps to create a private bucket. Do not allow public access. Settings should be similar to what is pictured on the right. As you can see, Permissions for block public access is enabled. Now you want to create a certificate for your forward zone. Ensure that you've already created that Route 53 forward zone. You'll generate a certificate request for vault dot your forward zone name dot tld or use a wildcard such as star dot your forward zone dot tld. Add the DNS CNAME verification option to automatically verify using Route 53. Next step is the EC2 application load balancer. Create a new application load balancer under the EC2 section, spanning your two public availability zones in your new VPC created previously. Select the internet facing two HTTPS listeners over TCP443 and TCP8200. Bind the certificate you generated from ACM in the previous step to those listeners. Create a new security group that allows TCP443 from 0.0.0.0/0, which is all access inbound, ingress, named vault sg elb. Create a new target group. This will allow the target to be set to TCP8200, which will be for API vault traffic. Set the health check to what's pictured on the right, which is slash v1 slash sys slash health. This will return an error uh, code of header code of 200 when a health check is clean. Next, we'll set up the launch configuration. You want to browse the EC2 auto scaling launch configurations. Create launch configuration. Retrieve AWS EC2 user data text from external resources in the lecture. Use this for the user data section. This essentially will be a bootstrap script, which will launch the vault successfully every time. Create a new key pair if you haven't already. Store it safely and use that key pair. Key pair. Use T3 Micro for instance type, Amazon Machine Linux 2, have the AMI specified there. Select spot instance if desired, set prices accordingly. You want to set them close to market, top market value which is on demand to ensure that they are not immediately terminated. Select assign a public IP address to every instance. Select the IAM role you created previously which is vault-role. Select the security group that will allow 
only TCP8200 traffic from Elastic Load Balancer. Alt-SG-ELB. Should pretty much resemble what is pictured on the right. Next, we're going to set up the auto scaling group. We're going to browse the EC2 auto scaling, auto scaling groups, create auto scaling group. Name it BC ASG or similar. Set the target tracking for auto scaling to what's pictured on the right. We're setting it for CPU utilization at 85%. So those T3 micros would have to exceed 85% usage before they scale up. Next, set the desired capacity to 2, min 1, max 3. In the picture, I have 0. So I've scaled it down in the meantime. Set the health check to ELB, so it uses the elastic load balancer health check that we previously set. Set the target group accordingly. Then set the subnets to the private zones and the subnets we created previously. Next we're going to create the DynamoDB table. Browse the DynamoDB, create the table. Name the table name similar to what is pictured. You can name it vault-backend. Set the primary partition key to path in all uppercase. Set primary sort key to key all uppercase. Then create the DynamoDB table. This may take about 10 to 15 minutes. Create an IAM role named Bolt role. Attach policies to allow for DynamoDB full access. Restrict the arm to the Amazon resource name to the DynamoDB table you created earlier. Set full access to S3, restrict the ARN to the S3 bucket created earlier, full access to IAM for AWS Secrets Engine access key generation. For the full access to IAM, I have a policy that I've attached in the lecture for a more granular policy for IAM. We'll take another break to allow for the resource creation, which in this case will be for DynamoDB. In the next lecture, we're going to discuss setting up HashiCorp Vault in AWS, and then deploy. So please come join me in the next lecture. Thank you.